Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And thank you for joining us on the Live Unreal with Love You podcast, where every week, Jeff Glover will dive deep into the questions that you're asking. He understands the challenges you're facing on a day-to-day basis because he still works every day on the front lines of real estate, with him and his team closing over 1,000 homes per year. On this episode, we are taking a break from the Glover You Sell system to meet Kate Simon. We will learn from Jeff and Kate how to treat discipline as a skill. Let's hear from Jeff Glover and Kate Simon on how you can bring discipline into your life. A lot of people ask, you know, how did, how did you and Kate meet? How did you arrive at, at, at Kate for joining you along this journey and helping put together uh, what is known today as essentially Glover You? And a lot of people don't know this, but Kate was actually probably one of the first people that had uh, ever had any exposure to, to me and what I was teaching back before I even had the real estate company that we have today. Uh, in fact, her dad had brought her to a training class uh, when I was the trainer for Cobol Banker back in 2007. And you know, here she is, probably a sophomore in college or a junior, I'm not sure, in the, in the middle of summer, being forced against her will, I'm sure, to sit there and say, hey, you, you got to hear what, what, what's going on in this industry and you got to hear what this guy has to say. And I can remember she was sitting to the left, you know, kind of like apprehensively taking notes because it's what you're supposed to do, but essentially probably not mentally totally checked into what we were saying because obviously she was in college at the time. And when I think about the path that she went on after that session, all right, she was essentially one of the first, if not the first inside sales associate before they even called them inside sales associates. We called them prospectors back then at JGA. She had a successful career as an inside sales associate at JGA, went on to be a OSA, an outside sales associate for us, our rookie of the year, had, had a couple successful years and decided she wanted to pursue her goal of moving and starting a real estate business in California. And she did that, and she fought and fought, and we kept in contact the entire time. She came back, she came to a lot of our stuff. Uh, We were really in communication the entire time. And it was probably a couple years ago, and of course the entire time, we were always talking about there's gonna be a way, we're gonna be working together someday again, I know it's gonna happen, we're somehow, you know, I'm not coming back to Michigan, don't even think about it, but we're gonna somehow figure out how to make this work, and you maybe come out to California, we work together out here. And finally, a couple years ago, I said, Kate, it's time. And, and it's almost like she knew what I was talking about. It's almost like she knew that it's time for Glover U. And this particular person, this young lady that I'm gonna bring up on the stage is the picture of discipline and mindset and applying yourself and calling yourself out, uh, being, being self-accountable and, and working towards self-mastery. So I would like to welcome to the stage Miss Kate Simon topic for this session is creating discipline uh, in 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 life not necessarily just in business but in all areas of life you know uh, I started the day talking about how it's my belief that if everyone lives an unreal life on this earth Mm -hmm. with at home with the family uh, at work with co-workers then they will be able to experience things that they weren't able to experience prior to the unreal life they're able to do things that weren't necessarily happening prior to being exposed to this type of information or this type of an environment. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I really admire about you is your ability to have a very, very high level of discipline. Uh, Self-discipline in yourself, and then of course with the clients that we work with, holding them accountable to their discipline. So uh, I wanna start off first question, and uh, it's probably not even on here, so you know I'm gonna do that to you sometime. Uh, She's a little nervous, so take a deep breath, Kate, you'll be good. (laughs) Thank you. why, why, why is discipline, and again, I'm sorry you're not prepared for this, so you're going to shoot me after. Jesus. Why is discipline, why is that like your thing? Why is that like your word? What, what, why, why is that our topic today? Well, obviously, there's a lot of decisions that I've made over the last five, seven years that are a result of having discipline. Um, I think at a young age, there were a lot of things going on either in my family life and my personal life that I didn't have any control over. And um, if anyone knows me, I'm high DC. I don't like the concept of not having control over anything. Uh, So I found an outlet in seeing what everything, seeing everything that was going on around me and not being okay with it and deciding that that wasn't going to define me. Um, deciding that regardless of everything else going on, regardless of the stuff that I was personally navigating through, um, I was gonna find a way through it. And the only way through it 
is to take complete ownership for absolutely everything in your life and not leave it up to anybody else, right? Not leave it up to your circumstances. So um, I wanted to create a life by my design, by on my terms, and the only way I could do that is by boxing myself in with extreme discipline. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, we talk about a lot about having a productive environment, having a great culture, having positive people that we're surrounded with, but the reality is life happens, mm -hmm. things get in the way, and, and I think when things get in the way or things happen, you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You can choose the discipline path and saying, you know what, it doesn't, if it is to be, it's up to me. It doesn't matter what's happening. Right. I, I can't use that as an excuse for why I'm not succeeding or why I'm not getting what I want. Mm -hmm. Instead, or you choose the path of, you know what, uh, yeah, it's the environment, you know, it's not my fault. You know, you play the blame game, right? You're not looking inside at what you could be doing differently. So right. uh, we, we wrote down a few questions, and, and if you don't mind, I, I, how to treat discipline like a skill in 2019. Mm -hmm. Right, we talk a lot about skills, and, and of course, as the morning goes on, and later today and tomorrow, I'm going to go through the 20, essentially the 20 skills uh, of the Glover U sales system. One of them has a lot to do with discipline. So uh, we wrote down, point number one, we need to treat discipline like a muscle that needs to be worked daily in order to be strengthened. What do you mean by that? So Dan actually touched on this yesterday in our private session, and he used the word character instead of discipline, but it's the same thing. Um, we need to start treating every single decision that we have on a daily basis as either an opportunity to strengthen your discipline or weaken your discipline, right? You set your alarm for 5.30 in the morning and you hit snooze until 5.35. That's either working for your discipline or against your discipline, right? So we need to start treating every single thing we do in, a, in the day as something that's inching us towards that skill. Gotcha. So point number one, if you're taking notes, we need to treat discipline like a muscle that needs to be worked da daily in, in order to be strengthened. And Correct. similar to what Dan was saying, I mean, obviously, you're, you're pretty passionate about your health and fitness as well, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. you're, you're the one that, that went and got the microwave when, when you needed to bring your own food and cook your own food. So yeah. I would say you're a little maybe on the crazy side when it comes to it, but that's just me. <coughs> so we're going to get to that. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the difference between discipline and motivation for a minute. You wrote down here, motivation is fleeting. What does that mean? So this one kills me, and if any of you know me on a personal level, like Dan was saying, like Jeff was saying, I'm a little bit of a health and fitness freak. Um, you know, last year I competed in my first bodybuilding competition, which if anyone's ever done that before, you know it's extremely grueling, especially the six weeks out, right? I mean, you get suboptimal levels of body fat to the point where you physically can't make it through the day without taking two to three naps. And I remember I used to sit in front of the fireplace wrapped in a blanket, and my husband was like, what the heck is wrong with you? But my body literally couldn't keep itself warm, but I was so committed to my goals, right? So I talk about that story because don't you think there's days where I physically couldn't show up and go to the gym? There's days where I didn't want to eat cold chicken out of a bag. There's days that I didn't want to eat 42 grams of rice or whatever I was weighing out. But the, the discipline was my decision to go on stage and compete in a super tiny bikini knowing that the consequence of that would be making a fool of myself, right? So it was, it was the fact that I had the motivation to get started, but don't expect the motivation to be there mm -hmm. throughout the process, right? Don't expect that motivation is a necessary component to show up and do what you feel like doing. It's not. Sure, it makes things easier, and it'll, it'll make your day fantastic if you wake up motivated, but stop expecting to feel motivated all the time. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of like a New Year's resolution. Everyone is, obviously, the motivation level is the highest January 1, and as each day passes, it gets less and less and less, unless you have the discipline to keep it at that level every day, right? Motivation has absolutely nothing to do with commitment to your goal. It's, you know, it's a, it's a nice frosting on top, but it has absolutely nothing to do with actually making it happen. Awesome. You wrote down number two, Kate. Detach yourself from your feelings. What does that mean? So a lot of times what I've experienced uh, personally with myself, with a lot of my coaching clients, with a lot of my fitness clients is they come into me with either a coaching call or a check-in and they give me a laundry list of all the bad things that have happened to them that week and all the reasons why they don't feel like doing their job. Again, it goes back to the same point we made um, with discipline and motivation. Your feelings are real, your feelings are relevant, right? So you could have just got off a horrible phone conversation with a client, uh, they could have said some nasty things to you, all of that's relevant, right? But we can't let the feelings be the compass of where we take the rest of our day, okay? So 
a lot of people, they meet me and they, they see my discipline routine and they assume that I'm like a robot and don't have feelings of any sort. Jeff and Taylor can attest to this. I have plenty of feelings. Um, <laughs> but uh, I how- it, I think that's anxiety, but I guess that's a feeling. I have a lot of anxiety <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of people ask me, well, how do you turn it off? How do you actually make that decision? And I know this sounds really silly, uh, but for me, I time block it. Um, so what that might look like is this. If you're an ISA and you're, you're getting beat up on the phones, you've got your 10 minute mindset break, great. All of those nasty things that you felt when you were on the phone with somebody, take out a journal, write them down, move on, right? So yesterday, uh, Jeff and I were, Jeff Taylor and I were wrapping up some planning and uh, we got a message and it literally, like my blood was boiling, right? I took five minutes to be mad, flipped the switch and then we got right back to planning. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to not completely pretend like you don't have feelings because let's be real, we all have feelings, but shorten the time frame in which they're gonna uh, affect you and decide when you're done, you're done. Love it. Next thing you wrote down, number three, is remove the option. What do you mean by that, Kate? So I know Dan talked about this also in a lot of different ways. Um, and I wrote down this question back here. How many of you on a daily basis wake up every single day and have to mentally make the decision of whether or not you're gonna brush your teeth? Does anyone like struggle making that decision? <laughs> Does anyone wake up and like call their best friend and say, oh my God, I have to brush my teeth again today. Are you gonna brush your teeth? Did you brush your teeth yet? No, no. right? Mm -hmm. Because you make a decision at a young age, you're one years old and you know that you brush your teeth every day because that's what you need to do. Treat your prospecting the same way, right? Don't treat it like it's an option. Treat showing up to the office at 8 a.m. like it's something you do like brushing your teeth. If you're serious about health and fitness, your workouts aren't a choice every day, it's built into your schedule. Nobody had to tell Dan to wake up this morning, right? He packed his stuff, he got his workout in, and guess what, it's negative 15 degrees out, doesn't matter, got his workout in, in his room. It's not a decision, it's, it's part of your habit at this point. So forget the fact that you need to make the decision every day, you just need to make the decision once, right? At one year old, you made the decision, hey, I'm gonna brush my teeth every day for the rest of my life. Make a decision once for what you want your future to look like. Thank you, Kate. One of the things you said in that is, um, you know, getting up at the same time every day or showing up at the office at the same time every day. You use the example of 8 a.m. What is the value to a real estate agent of being in the office at the same time every day? Because I hear it all the time. Well, I got a closing this morning. I can't be there at 8 a.m., but I'll be there on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at this time. What is, what is the value of being at the, in, the, in, in that mode or in that zone every single day at the same time? So there's obviously a ton of different ways you can take that. You know, what you would say is get your prospecting done in the morning because you won't get it done in the afternoon. There's a ton of different ways we can justify that, but the big thing for me is how you show up in one area of your life is how you show up in every area of your life. How you display discipline in one area of your life is how you display discipline in every area. So if you're gonna show up at 10.30 at the office one day and 8 a.m. the next day, guess what? You're probably gonna skip your workout too because you already let yourself off the hook with your morning schedule. So for me, it's less about productivity and it's more about not letting yourself off the hook for the commitments that you made. And I, and I even talk to some of my clients about this and you know, again, it's not recommended, but I say, look, even if you just show up at the office and you stare at the wall for the first two hours, at least you're showing up, right? Even if you show up to the gym and you walk on the treadmill for five minutes, at least you show up. But don't, don't start the habit of cutting corners on when and where you show up. Love it, and we're obviously we're gonna talk about that once we get into the sales system. Point number four you wrote down, inspect your expectations of discipline. Inspect your expectations of discipline. What does that mean? So again, a lot of times when I speak to my clients, um, you know, we set a goal. They're really excited about it. The first couple calls, they go great. Um, you know, call two, three, four comes along and oh my gosh, I had a closing. You don't understand what's going on at home. I've got this going on. All of that's valid, right? But what, what I'm really hearing underneath that is they expected it to be easy. And today it wasn't easy to have discipline. So today I didn't have discipline, right? And um, this is actually where I was gonna talk about the microwave story. So <laughs> I hope nobody in the, uh, working at the hotels in this room because uh, <laughs> This is uh, not a good thing. So anyway, we check in, I go up to my room, they've got a mini fridge, great. I've got two, three days worth of all of my meals packed and prepped because I'm psycho like that. By the way, you <laughs> left your broccoli in my fridge, it's stinking it up. Okay, I'll come get it, <laughs> <laughs> I'll come get it later. Um, but I made a decision 
that just because we're at a conference for three days, I'm not gonna drink and eat out five times a day because there's only restaurants on site and a McDonald's a half mile away and then cornfields, right? So I knew up front to hit my goals, I'd need to plan ahead and bring the food that I know that I need to do to succeed for me. So I show up, get in my room, got the fridge, we're getting ready and I go, crap, there's no microwave. How am I gonna heat up any of this stuff that I brought? So I call down to the front desk, hey, I don't know if you guys forgot the microwave, do you have a microwave anywhere? <laughs> no, we don't have a microwave anywhere. Said, you don't have a microwave anywhere in this building. No, we don't. So I'm texting Jeff and Taylor. I'm pretty upset at this point. I said, what the heck are we gonna do? I said, screw it. I got eat, in my car, eat I drove. normal people food, maybe? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> you're being ridiculous. Be versatile. No. So I got in my car, I drove 10 miles to Meyer, got a microwave, and I'm sitting in my car and I thought, holy crap, how am I gonna get this back to my room? You guys know there's a security desk there, right? So how the heck am I gonna get this microwave back up there? So I go back into Meyer. Because they told you it was a fire hazard. Which, you have a stove in your room. So anyway, you talk to the wrong we'll person. talk about that later, but <laughs> um, fire, ha but you have a literal stove in your room. Anyway, so I get a garbage bag. I unpack the microwave in my car so it fits in the garbage bag. I look ridiculous <laughs> at this point. You're like carrying it behind your back like Santa Claus? No, I'm carrying a huge oh. cube past the security <laughs> desk into the elevator. And it's sitting on my floor in the, uh, in the hotel room right now. The story back to that is I made a decision before we came here that I was gonna stay on track with my food because guess what? I have a coach as well. I have a fitness coach that I need to check in with. And not being prepared is not an option. Deciding that because I'm traveling for three days I can't stay on track is not an option for me. So that was my solution. And it would have been easy to just say, you know what? I tried. They don't have a microwave on site. I brought my food. It's unfortunately going to go bad. I'm now forced to do with, you know, whatever. Follow a different program. Exactly. Basically. So back to the initial point. Stop expecting discipline to be easy. There's nothing easy about me unpacking a microwave in my car and smuggling it <laughs> up a hotel. There's nothing easy about that. In fact, that's a little wild, okay? It's a little crazy. But that's how committed I am to my personal goals. By the way, I also learned in that story that Meyer sells microwaves for 50 bucks. Jeff thought a microwave was $900. <laughs> I mean, well, the built-in the built ones are nice. I don't know. I was surprised it was 50 bucks. So then she asked me, well, what do you think a banana costs? <laughs> this is so funny. I said, I don't know, maybe a buck 50, two bucks for a banana. <laughs> $2 for a banana. <laughs> I'll stick to the restaurants at the hotel. All right, point number five. Shorten the time period in which you're willing to let yourself be off your game. Yeah. Shorten the time period in which you're willing to let yourself be off your game. So I've got a couple of points to share here, and it ultimately fits under the topic of flip the switch. So here at JGA, we have a mantra, flip the switch at the door. Doesn't matter what happened you know, before, doesn't matter what happened after. Um, when you're at the office, you're in our culture, you're committed to succeeding. And it's incredibly inspiring. I see it on a daily basis. Um, our associates go through some challenging things. Our associates, you know, lose loved ones. Our associates have happy things going on. Um, our associates have family members that are sick. Our associates have people that have passed away within the last week. And you would never know it because they flip the switch at the door and they're all committed to everything that we're doing together. So the points that I'm gonna share is how, that, how I personally flip my switch quicker and how we can all do that as well. Love it, all right, take us through it. All right, so number one, get out and move, guys. You get a bad phone call with a client, you have a bad meeting with somebody, you're in a bad funk, just get out, do a lap around the block, just get out and, and break the pattern of what you're doing. Um, you know, I typically wear my running shoes at the office because at any given point in time, whether I'm on the phone or not, I'm walking around the block, right? So get out of your environment, break the pattern, do a pattern, interrupt is number one. Get out and move, point number one. Thank Correct. You. Number two is gonna be set a deadline, guys. So again, back to the feelings thing. Nobody expects you to be unaffected. Nobody expects you to be void of emotions. That's unrealistic, okay? That doesn't make sense, right? But set a deadline for yourself, right? You, get a, you have a bad morning with your spouse, bad morning with your kid. Decide and give yourself 15 minutes and don't talk about it anymore. Just move on from it. That's number two. Number three, this is my favorite one, and I think this is probably the hardest one for everybody because human nature is to seek validation, especially when we're in a challenging situation. But number three is think before you guys share, okay? 
one of your clients comes to you and is a complete jerk, our instant reaction is to run to our, our, our um, you know, friend in the office and say, oh my God, you'll never believe what this client said or did to me, this is insane, right? But the question I'll ask somebody is, is this a learning-based conversation or are you just venting? If you're coming to an associate to learn and say, hey, this tough situation happened, how would you handle it? Great. If you're going to talk to your associate just to be heard, understand that you're perpetuating the cycle because number one, you just relived the situation mm -hmm. that you already lived. And number two, you just brought somebody else down with you, okay? Yep. And then post it on Facebook, comment about it, text somebody else about it. Nip it in the bud, guys. You have a bad situation, the worst thing you can do is start talking about it with everybody else because you're continue. reliving it, yeah. right? So shorten that. How, that. That's an awesome point. Um, how do you do that without like being rude? Like I think about, you know, and, and we obviously have our associates in the room, but they don't usually run to me with a lot of that stuff because I'm probably like not, in, I appear not interested. Correct. And they know I'm not gonna be interested in continuing that conversation. So yeah. how do you do that without like being rude? Well, obviously, guys, if, you're, if you are that person in the office that people come to vent to, it's going to take a transition period to help them learn how to communicate with you and how you communicate with them, right? So in, every given, in any given day, we're, we're teaching people how to communicate with us and what's okay. So in a lot of cases, um, you know, it's not that I don't have, you know, I would say years ago I'd have people call me and vent or my friends would call me and tell me what a crappy day. My friends don't call me and vent about that anymore because they know that they're only gonna hear the truth from me and I'm probably just gonna tell them something that they A, don't wanna hear, or B, give them a solution to fix it. Like, I don't get those phone calls from my friends anymore. And if and when I do get those phone calls from people, they're very short and I, and I say, okay, so? You had, a ba you had a bad day, so? All right, now what, I've gotta go. And it might be rude, but guess what? I'm committed to my energy first because I pour into so many people on a daily basis that if I let one person bring me down, it affects 50 people. And I can't have that. I take my energy and my mood very seriously. I don't let it affect, I don't let people affect it. So I heard two things in that. Number one, you don't want to be the person that people come to vent to, okay? Number two, if you are currently that person, because it's human nature. Yeah, for sure. If you are currently that person, to become the person that people don't come to vent to, you respond essentially with solutions. Versus, they hate it. They versus hate it. getting into woe is me and reliving it and all that. Oh, they hate it. You respond with a solution. Right. And if they want the solution, they're happy. And if they just want to vent, they'll stop calling you. Either way, it's a win. Love it. So true, there's, there's so much gold in that. So much gold. Number four, go ahead. Stop ritualizing your bad day. What I mean by that is this, guys. You have a bad morning prospecting, cool. Now you just earned yourself a long, you know, a long lunch with the girls and maybe you had a cocktail because you had a bad morning. Clients being crazy, cool. Take yourself out to an extra long dinner and you know, skip your workout, right? So what I mean by that is this, stop attaching a reward to you having a bad day, right? Stop sitting on the couch with a pint of ice cream and crying about your bad day when the moment was really only from 8.05 to 8.10, right? Nip it in the bud, stop ritualizing the bad day because what happens is when we use that as an excuse to overindulge, to socialize, to sleep in because I worked so late last night, it's now a reward and it's not treating, it's not, it's not teaching you to change that behavior. It's teaching you that there's a pot of gold at the end of your misery rainbow. So stop doing it. Love it. Next. Practice challenging your thinking. And again, this is kind of what I do with, um, you know, my friends whenever they come to vent to me. Um, if you guys are having a bad day and something happened, understand that we're very much in a victim mentality. Something's happening to me. Something happened because of something else, right? So think about how egocentric that is for a second. Whenever you're having a bad day, you couldn't be more focused on yourself, okay? So what I like to do in that instance is I, I have to take a step back and find three solutions or three opposite perspectives, right? And this is what I wrote down. Sellers acting stubborn or crazy, number one, maybe there's more going on behind the scenes that you don't know about with their relationship or family. Number two, maybe your phone call about reducing the price came quickly after an unexpected bill or expense. Number three, maybe this listing is the only thing that they can control in their life right now. So in general, those three points just talk about having compassion, right? Understanding that they're not doing it to you and that there's a whole world up happening to other people around you besides your interaction with them. So just have some compassion and understand that. Um, and then from there, I just lost my train of thought here. 
So what I what I focus shifting on here mindset. is shift your mindset and find three ways to bring it back to them. Make it about them, right? And my favorite way to do this, and Christy and I still do this all the time, tell me something great. And I know when she texts me that, it's code for I'm in a victim mentality, tell me something great. And when I text her that, it's code for I'm in a victim mentality, tell me something great. So instead of talking about the negative things, force somebody else around you to tell you something great and it'll flip it. Love that. Number six. Okay, last but not least. Have a mindset routine and set a mindset goal. You guys, we all have prospecting goals. You talk about production goals. You make a business plan. You have a start time. You have an end time. What does your discipline plan and your mindset plan look like with that business plan? When do you work on yourself? When do you work on strengthening that discipline muscle? Have it in your schedule. Does it mean you're starting your day at 5, 5.30 every single day? Does it mean you're working out every single day? Does it mean you're packing your lunch? Have areas of your life that don't have anything to do with real estate where you can practice discipline. And in turn, you will have more discipline in real estate as well. Love it. Last thought. You guys have to back up your discipline goals with extreme accountability. So um, thank you, by the way, for everything that you said about me being a disciplined person. But the truth is, Jeff still coaches me every day. I had dinner next to Dan Grebe last night, and he was coaching me. I have a fitness coach that I check in with every single week, even though I'm a personal trainer. The difference is my fitness coach is actually a professional bodybuilder. The difference is my coach is five, 10 levels above where I am. It doesn't matter how good you are today or where you think you are to other people. You should always be surrounding yourself with people that are 10 levels above you, holding you accountable to what you say you're gonna do. There's never a point where Jeff doesn't have a coach or I don't have a coach or Dan doesn't have a coach. You never make it to the point where you're uncoachable or you don't need a coach anymore. So back up your goals, back up the things you say you're going to do with extreme accountability and get a coach. And if you want this extreme accountability, uh, I think Kate probably can offer it <laughs> if you're looking for that. <laughs> Thank you for taking your time to join Jeff and Kate today on the Live Unreal with Glover You podcast. To get started on your road to discipline, take the real estate self-assessment to determine what areas in your real estate business need to improve. After you complete the assessment, a member of Glover You will get on a call with you to create an action plan to improve your score. Go to www.gloveru.com dot com slash self. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Search for Live On Real with Glover You on iTunes, Podbean, or Spotify and subscribe today. Until next time, remember, you need to treat discipline like a muscle that needs to be worked daily in order to be strengthened. <laughs>